Hey guys, it's me Kesamar here and today I'm going to be reading a Tsukishima K ex listener. This one is titled Do You Love Me? And um I'm really excited to read this. This is a cute fluff story, guys, so uh, you don't have to worry about angst. It's cute and it's fluff, so um even though apparently there's like a squint of angst in there, but it's really not gonna be that much by the tags. So um yeah, without further ado, let's get right on into the video. The first time you asked Tsukishima was in second grade. He was drawing on his desk while you were sitting beside him looking at how the green marker in his hand filled the dinosaur that he had drawn earlier. You blinked, puffing out your cheeks as he looked at your best friend. Tsukushima was focused on coloring, not minding how he had overlined or overlapped his line art, his tongue sticking out to the side. Tsukushima, you called out, tilting your head to the side. He looked up to you for a second while going, and then looking back to his drawing before humming in response. What's love? The question seemed rather... Random, yet it made Tsukushima stop what he was doing. <clears throat> he looked up to you, furring his eyebrows as he tapped his chin with the end of the crayon. My mom always says she loves me, so it's a good thing, right? He replied, pushing his glasses back up as they slowly had slid off of his nose. You nodded, looking down. What do you love, Tsukushima? You asked him. He looked back down at his drawing with a soft smile. He looked back at you. I love dinosaurs. You both giggled, a light-hearted, a light-hearted atmosphere indulging the both of you. He smiled, looking at him once more. Do you love me? He smiled back at you. Not as much as I love dinosaurs, though. <laughs> time skip. The second time was in high school. Yamaguchi with the both of you all the time. You had felt safe with your friends. He laid on Yamaguchi's bed. Tsukushima was on the floor to your side as his headphones were plugged in and resting on his head as he read some book. Yamaguchi laid beside you, outstretching his hand to draw imaginary constellations. Say, Tsukushima, he said, softly pushing his headphones forward. He whipped his head, to he whipped his head towards you, an irritated expression painted upon his face with his headphones in his hands. You grinned at him, turning your body to face him. Truth or dare? He scoffed, rolling his eyes at you. What are you, twelve? You pouted. Yamaguchi sat up, <clears throat> leaning his head against the headboard. <clears throat> oh, ask me, Wayan. You had turned around to face Yamaguchi, but before you could ask him, Tsukushima had already answered. He looked at the floor, as if he was trying to avoid your eyes. Truth. You smiled, Yamaguchi scooting over to hear what you were going to ask him. You clapped your hands together. Truth. Um, do you love me? Tsukushima looked at you, a blush on his cheeks going unnoticed because of the dim lighting, and he smirked. Of course not, idiot. Tsukushima snickered as you fake gasped. By the moment that you had already given Tsukushima another question, his reply lingered in your head, piercing through your heart like an icicle. It was cold, spreading throughout your body as you stared at him. He was talking to Yamaguchi about something. The whole conversation was muffled at the sound of your own heart slowly breaking. Time skip. The third time was after your college graduation. Tsukushima had picked you up from the bar that you were in after Yaji called him. He doesn't know why he was there. He had an internship tomorrow, so why was he here? Inside of a club with music blaring through the speakers while people were grinding on each other just to pick you up. He sighed, maneuvering his way through the sea of people, trying his best not to touch any of their sweaty bodies on his on his, uh, on his way to the booth Yachi had told him to come to. As he neared the booth, he could already see your figure. You were sitting there. You were sitting on a chair, half-lidded eyes fluttering open around the room with your hand propped against the table, your cheek firmly pressed against your palm. Hey, idiot. He called over the loud music, making you turn your head towards him. A warm, gentle smile appeared on your lips, making your heart skip a beat. You waved at him, pushing yourself up, but your legs began to shake. Tsukushima caught you in a flash, one of his slender arms wrapping around you, pulling you close to him. He could smell the alcohol on you, but your scent was still there. A mix of lavender and strawberry. It made, his, it made his heart flutter again. Come on, let's get you home. Before you could protest, he was already dragging you to the exit. 
His grip was on your hand, and it was strong, but soft, as if he was afraid to hurt you. Through your drunken gaze, you looked up at him, his, sk his skin seeming so soft under the moonlight, and his hair was slicked back this time, indicating that he must have had a very hard time finding you. He only pushes his hair back whenever he's worried or confused, which he rarely is. Sugishima, you called out, swaying as he turned his head towards you, golden eyes looking directly into yours. You swallowed the lump in your throat, something within you burning, or something within you was burning the longer you stared into his eyes. His gaze wasn't threatening or irritated in any way. In fact, it was gentle. Tsukushima had noticed, or had always been your best friend, yet you just noticed how handsome he was up close. Do you love me? The question caught him off guard, a blush flaring up on his pale, pale cheeks. He looked away, furring his eyebrows and coughed. I- <clears throat> You're drunk, Ryan. You really need to- Before he finishes his sentence, you slumped your body towards him, your breasts pressed against his chest. If you don't have any, then chest, there we go. <laughs> um, he sighed before calling an Uber, wait, sorry. Making him blush all the way up to his, <laughs> making him blush from his cheeks all the way up to the tip of his ears. He sighed before calling an Uber, using another arm to study you in place. As he made a call, or as he made the call, you were snuggling into him, making him smile softly. He placed his phone back into his pocket, looking back at you as you snored. He laughed, tucking in strands of hair behind your ear, or tucking your stray strands of hair, hair behind your ear. Even in sleep, you still look so gorgeous. I love you more than you'll ever know, he whispered, looking at the road to see the Uber pulling up. Another time skip. The fourth was messy. After a hard day at work, Tsukushima had found himself meeting up with you at a cafe that you had always loved. He was tired from his boss's non-stop orders, but it wouldn't hurt to see you. As you sat at your usual table, or as he sat at your usual table, waiting for you, he found himself wondering what you were going to tell him. Was it about work? A new house? A new pet? Tsukushima thought for a second, but then his heart dropped at another thought. Were you going to tell him that you had a boyfriend? He scoffed himself. Why would he care? He was your best friend. He wasn't supposed to restrict in who you date. That would be selfish of him. As you walked in the door, a big smile on your lips, Tsukushima's heart suddenly tremors. Maybe it wouldn't hurt if he was a little selfish sometimes. Hey! You sat on the other side of the table, Tsukushima humming at you. He had already told you he had ordered both of your food, and you thanked him for it. A conversation sparking up between the both of you. Giggles and teasing comments were thrown in here and there, as your order had arrived. Tsukushima had always been close to you. He didn't want to know anything bad- wait, he didn't want anything bad to happen to the both of you and what you had. Hey, Tsukushima. He looked up from your coffee cup, throwing a bit of steam onto it. With both of your hands wrapped in the cup, there was a little blush on your cheeks, making Tsukushima blush as well. He looked up, eyes sparkling in the cafe. His breath hitches. There was no way you were going to. I think I love you. His heart dropped. He really did love you. He- or he loved you. He really did. But the thought of love made him terrified. His past lovers were cool to him, and he had his heart stomped on so many times before. The thought of losing you, it hurt him. It was too much. He didn't want to lose you, yet, as he looked into your eyes, he knew that he already did. His lack of response made your heart break all over again. You sat down your cup, tears welling in your eyes as you looked at him. Do, do you love me too? I do, he thought to himself. He frowned at you. Sorry, I don't feel the same. As soon as his words left his mouth, you stood up, walking towards the exit. The coffee you had ordered was still steaming as Tsukushima rubbed his face. His heart shattered all over the floor with a million pieces, or in a million pieces. He had messed up. 
another time skip. The fifth one was after five months of avoiding him. After your confession, Tsukishima couldn't stop thinking about you. He had tried to reach out to you through your social media, texts, phone calls, even your friends, but he still couldn't get a hold of you. He should have stopped when Yamaguchi told him to give you space. Yet, here he was, in front of your door with his hand an inch away from knocking. He swallowed the lump forming in his throat, his feet tapping against the wooden floor nervously. It was just you. Why was he so nervous? Before he could knock, the door opened, revealing you behind it. You had your wallet in one hand, and the other one was on the doorknob. Your eyes widened to see Tsukushima standing at your doorway. I, um... <clears throat> Wyan, I wanted to... Well, um... He was a stuttering mess, making you smile softly at him. You tried your hardest not to talk to him, until now. You wanted to call him again and say that you understood, but Pogato, along with Hinata, said it was better if you just left him alone for a while. A while had turned into months as you would join yourself with your work, Pokato and Hinata distracting you with endless deadlines and or and endless endless deadlines flowing your way. Come to think of it, this was the only day you were free this is the only free day you had in a long time. Can we Oh, sorry. Can we talk? Wait, where are you going? He asked, stepping back as you closed the door behind you. Tsukushima's voice was soft, like the feeling of wind brushing against your skin on a cool afternoon. His eyes were clouded with something that you rarely would see in them. Hope? I was on my way to get ice cream, he replied. If you're lactose intolerant, just pretend you're going somewhere else. Or it's lactose intolerant ice cream, I don't know. You replied, using your fingers to push back your hair behind your ear. Tsukushima looked at you, watching your small movements and how they shook his heart. You looked up at him through your eyelashes. Do you want to come with me? He smiled. Somehow, the two of you had managed to sit down at the park near your apartment. It was quiet, the moonlight peeking through the, the gray clouds as they swam by. Tsukushima eats his ice cream in silence next to you. Yet there was this tension lingering within the air as the crickets sing their song in the distance. The bench was or the bench that the both of you sat at wasn't long enough. Your knee was brushing against his and he wouldn't have it any other way. I he breathed out, setting his cup of ice cream down. You looked at him, your cheeks puffed a bit, and an I and sorry, an ice cream sprawled out in the corner of your lips. He gulps, hoping you wouldn't hear his rapidly beating heart heartbeat and how hard it was pounding against his ribcage. He chuckled, leaning in to wipe wipe your, <laughs> wipe your lips with his thumb. You blushed as he swiped across your lip, his eyes adopting the warmth of the sun as it had contrasted with the moon's light. Tsukushima smiled softly. I'm sorry, he said. His voice barely above a whisper, but you were still able to make out what he had said. His warm hand rested on your cheek as he stared deeply into your eyes. Quan, I'm scared, he admitted. Every fiber of his being was shaking as he looked down onto his lap, his hand feeling cold against her cheek. Fear was circling around him, yet, as you leaned into his icy palm, Tsukushima looked up to you. The feeling of fear within his chest was gone. It suddenly felt light as he had saw your eyes underneath the pale moonlight. I know, you would whisper to him, softly smiling at your best friend. But you don't need to be, you added, placing a kiss onto his palm. A warm blush spread throughout his cheeks as your plump lips had pressed firmly against his rough hand, making him swallow the lump in his throat. He smiled, eyes almost disappearing. <clears throat> we can do this together, Kay. I'm scared too, but if it's with you, then what's there to lose? Tsukushima chuckled, eyes welling up in tears as he had pulled his hand away, wiping his eyes. <clears throat> you giggled at him, leaning in to, a ki or to kiss his cheek. He looked at you, eyes swelling as he'd saw the vibrancy in your eyes. Do you love me? Very much, yes. 
another time skip thing. <clears throat> Wait, no, it's not a time skip. Never mind. Wait, I don't know. I'm happy. <laughs> As the sun slowly sets in the horizon, light springing up upon the ocean waters, making the waves shine bright. You sit beside your husband of three years as you look ahead of him, as you look ahead of him, watching the waves crashing down against the shore. Kay, you called out. He looked at you, your heart fluttering at the, si at the sight of those golden eyes that you had fallen in love with. Yeah, he replied, placing a kiss onto your forehead. You smiled. I love you. Tsukushima smiled back at you his hand finding itself onto your cheek, his thumb caressing your cheekbone. And I love you too, even from the start when you asked me if I did. Stop it! Oh my god, don't do that to me, that was so cute! Oh my god, you guys, stop it. That was so cute, oh my god. That was adorable. Ah, that was so cute, oh my god, I can't. Okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And um, I'm sorry for the fucking background noise, I don't know where all of this noise is coming from but it's my cousins guys they're here yep it's a uh, tuesday they're here every tuesday and wednesday guys um <clears throat> and like i don't know why my dad decided to like slam the freaking door like and then my dog was walking around like if you heard all of that i'm sorry try your best to focus on that you're gonna hear it for the other video i'm dropping today which is an oikawa story um it's a cute little fluff story for oikawa because he's cute and i don't post enough oikawa fluff so here it is anyways um this is getting kind of long so without further ado i'm gonna end this video thank you guys for watching if you guys have oh, if you guys like the video make sure you subscribe and tap the notification bell so you get notified every single time i post a video and also like the video because that is something for you to what <laughs> and also like the video because that is something for you to youtube algorithm thank you guys for watching if you guys have a fantastic day and i'll see you guys in the next video goodbye